right, um, we're going to look at how we apply the chain rule in the multivariable case. Okay. So we have here a function, we call it a u. It's a function of x and y. And x and y, they are also functions of s and t, these two variables. So if you think about, if you plug in s and t into x and y, then u becomes a function of s and t. And we want to find the following thing. We want to find the partial derivative of u with respect to s or the partial derivative of u with respect to t. Now, uh, it's equivalent, so we're going to just demonstrate how to um, get one of these two derivatives. Okay, so we said we need to follow the chain rule. And because we have two intermediate variables, x and y, so we need to follow two chains. And here is one chain from x to s, this is one. And then here is another chain. So when we take derivatives, we need to finish both chains. So now let's try to find the derivative. Okay, it's du ds. Okay, it's equal to. All right, and we do the first one because of the chain rule. We have partial u, partial x, and partial x, and a partial s. That finishes the first chain, and then the second one, we have partial u partial y, and then partial y, and the partial s. That finishes the derivative with respect to s. That's a chain rule. If you wanted to derivative respect to t, that's the same thing. But you just remember that whenever we take a derivative, we take a derivative with respect to one variable. So now s is considered a constant, and it takes the derivative of u with respect to x, and then x derivative respect to t, and then derivative of u respect to y, and then derivative of y respect to t again. So these are the same formulas from the chain rule. So now let's look at an example. Um, let's say we have over here u of x, y is equal to, let's say, simply e to the x and plus y. That means e to the x times e to the y. Now let's choose some simple functions for x. x is going to be um, s sine t, and y is going to be s cosine t. Okay, so we have these. So now, how can we find partial u with respect to S, then we have. Now, we can take the derivative of this u with respect to x, which is easy. You have to simply e to the x and e to the y, because that's the same thing. And then we have dx ds. Now, the, let's just write down over here for the moment. And the second one is the same, because the function with respect to y is the same. So we have e to the x and e to the y, just x plus y. And then here, we have dy ds. Now let's look at what we have. Partial x, partial s is equal to sine t, because sine t is a constant. And partial y, partial s is equal to cosine t. So if we plug them back, this is the answer we have, x plus y. And then we have over here, sine t, and we have e to the x plus y, and then we have cosine t. Okay. So that's one partial derivative. Now, imagine that we want to take derivative again. So we have this derivative over here, u derivative respect to s. So let's say we want to find us as double derivative, which means the partial derivative of us respect to s. What would happen? Well, u of s, as we can see, is a function over here 
both of x and y and t. But remember, in this formula, x is still equal to s sine t, and y is equal to s cosine t. So both are functions of s and t. So when we take the derivative, we need to be very careful, and that's we apply the product rule over here. The sine t is a constant, so we have this. Let's just write down the formula first. So we have e to the x plus y, and then times sine t, because sine t is a constant. And then second one, we have this derivative e to the x plus y, and cosine t. But now you see, both x and y appear in this formula. So we have to use the chain rule again. So that means take the derivative of x, e to the x plus y, with respect to x, and then dx ds, and then plus the partial derivative with respect to y, e to the x plus y over here, and dy ds. So if we look at this expression over here, that's exactly the chain rule applied to this function over here. And then put everything inside a bracket we have, and then multiply it by sine t. And we have the same thing for the second one. We will have, let's just finish this computation over here, takes derivative of this e x plus y. With respect to x, we have e to the x plus y. But now we still have dx ds, and then plus e to the x plus y, and we have dy ds. So you see this part over here is the expansion of this derivative, and then multiplied by cosine t. To finish this computation, then we have e to the x plus y, and here we have um, sine t, and then plus e to the x plus y, and then we have cosine t. Okay. And then we have the whole thing multiplied by sine t, and then we have the same thing over here and this is sine t, and plus e to the x plus y, and this is cosine t, and multiplied by cosine t. All right, and we can simplify this one over here by factoring e to the x plus y out, and then multiply this sine t inside of sine t squared, and plus cosine t, sine t, and we have another sine t times cosine t, and then we have cosine square of t. Now remember, these two terms add up to one, so we have e to the x plus y, and here we have one, plus twice of sine t and cosine t. If you are willing, you can even further simplify if you use the double angle formula. This is going to be 1 plus sine 2t. That would be the second derivative of u function with respect to s twice. So this one over here is double derivative of u respect to s. Okay. All right. Um, in our next example, we are going to actually use an abstract function of u, and also we take the second order derivative. That's all.